Have you been on TRT or testosterone replacement therapy and concerned about fertility? Maybe you're wondering what the return of fertility after stopping TRT looks like. My name is Dr. Taranella. In this video, we're going to look at some of the things in the timeline of the return of your fertility as you're stopping testosterone replacement therapy. So if you like this kind of information on health, hormones, nutrition, and getting an expanded understanding of what's going on in your body, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical profession. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at the return of fertility after stopping TRT. So in this video, we're going to talk about the return of fertility after stopping TRT. I previously made a few videos on this topic, but I wanted to give a little bit more detail on this for those that are interested and still struggling to understand what's going on and how they can optimize their fertility after stopping testosterone replacement therapy. So first, just a quick little recap. Fertility often decreases when you're on TRT or testosterone replacement therapy because the testosterone decreases the amount of LH and FSH that your brain is producing. These are the hormones that stimulate the testes to make testosterone and spermatozoa. So with a reduced amount of those, you have decreased sperm production. Typically, once you remove the testosterone, the FSH and LH are going to start going back up. In fact, unless there is something interfering with the production of that organically, could be a brain lesion or something like that, typically the FSH is going to come surging back and so is the LH. I would expect the amount of FSH and LH to start to increase around day 10 to 14 after your last testosterone injection. It's probably going to peak around the three to four week mark. But keep in mind, these are just estimations based on what I've seen when people start to feel better and when their numbers on their actual testosterone labs start to go back up. So by the time you're about a month off of taking testosterone replacement therapy, a month after your last shot, we would expect to see you're pretty close to being back to where your baseline levels of testosterone were. And with that, you're going to be producing around your baseline amount of FSH and LH. As it relates to fertility, the FSH is what we're mostly concerned about. So that normal or baseline amount of FSH is going to exert its effect on those Sertoli cells at this time, at the four-week mark, and even previously as it's coming back online, it's slowly building, 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 and having more effect on those Sertoli cells. And this is where the spermatogenesis process takes place. So let's say you're making 50% of the amount of FSH compared to baseline while you're on your testosterone replacement therapy. Sometimes, of course, it could be less than that, but let's say if you're only making 50% of the FSH while you're on testosterone replacement therapy, sometimes it may be less, sometimes it may be more. That means you're going to have that much less of the sperm spermatogenesis process happening. Now, once you stop it, that FSH is coming back online slowly, slowly, and it's building its effect on those Sertoli cells. But at the one month mark, you're not out of the woods yet because that full FSH effect needs to be in place for two months because those spermatozoa take two months to be produced fully. So if the end goal is back to 100% of your baseline or back to, to whatever your baseline was, it's going to take probably about a full three months to get back to that. You need the first month for normal FSH to return, and you can give or take one or two weeks off of that. And then you need 60 days for those spermatozoa to fully mature. And so by the end of three months, you should be back to full production of whatever your baseline levels were prior to being on TRT. And of course, that's just a general rule of thumb. Three months is usually a good amount of time to guesstimate. Now, of course, you will have some increased fertility the further you get away from testosterone. And sometimes people still have plenty of fertility even when they are in testosterone. So there's, there's a lot of variability from person to person with this. Depends on your testosterone dose, how often you're taking it, 
what type of testosterone you're taking and things like this. You may be able to speed up or shorten that timeline to when you're back to full production by taking things like HCG, Clomid, and other things. Just remember that this is a fairly delicate process. And even though we know a lot about the fertility process, we'll never have the ability to mimic what that natural FSH effect on the testes is going to be. All right. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of the return of fertility after stopping TRT. What do you think? Did that help answer some of your questions about when your fertility is going to return? Do you have other questions? If so, drop them in the comment section. I may do a separate video on that topic, but I'll definitely try and answer your question. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.